which brings me to part of the reason why I wanted you to come on tonight, um, because you've had a, a very harrowing experience. And I think it's important uh, to talk about it and to think about it out loud. Um, so I'm, I'm going to ask you a very simple question and you take it wherever you want to go. All right. You ready? OK. So tell me about the flight. <sighs> OK, the flight. So um, I was leaving Houston, Texas. Uh, I was visiting my grandfather. I was um, leaving Houston to go to Nashville to perform for David Foster's um, daughter, Aaron Foster's wedding. And I got on a plane, sat down in my seat, put my earbuds in my ear. And the flight attendant approached me and singled me out and told me, hey, I hear music. Can you turn your, your earbuds down? So I complied. I turned it down. And then she came again and said, hey, I still hear your music. Can you turn it down? So I turned it down again. And there was a couple that was sitting um, next to me saying, hey, we don't hear any of your music. We think she's singling you out. So I paused it just to see you know, if she was like singling me out. And she comes over again and she's like mocking me like, hey, can you hear me? Hey, 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 can you hear me? Your music is loud. Da -da -da, that's just the problem. And then after that, it just, yeah, it just went crazy. Yeah. Wow, so, wow. So <laughs> you're playing music and, and it doesn't bother the person, the people you're sitting next to, right? But, but she has a problem, she being the, the, the flight attendant has yeah. a problem um, with how loud your music happens to be. Yeah. Um, do, do you think, looking back on it now, as you, as you sit here t today, do you think that it was racially motivated? Um. I mean, because here, here, here's, here's, your, here's, here's what someone could say and, and respond to this. Someone could say she was just having a bad day. Thing is, I don't know. Only thing I know was is that I was the only black person on the plane. I was the only person that was told to turn his music down in some earbuds. You know how earbuds are. You can't really hear music. And there were actually other people on the plane that were listening to music in their own earbuds. And I was just the only person that was chosen, you know, so I, I don't know. No, look, look, being the only, there's always, there's always that when you're the only black person anywhere, yeah. there's always that, you know what I'm saying? Um, so I, I hear you. And I, and I guess, I guess what you're saying is, and you, t you tell me if you agree with this, but what you're saying is that if you were white, you're saying you don't think any of this would have happened. I mean, there was other different races, Caucasians, Asians on a plane that didn't get called, that didn't get talked to. So, I mean... Yeah, <laughs> you know, basically, because it didn't happen. So I don't know. You know, all I know is I'm the only black person. I was the only one that was called out. So, yeah. Wow, it's 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 interesting um, because I want to I, I, I want to go deeper with this because I, I, I really want to unpack it um, because there's there's a there's a narrative here that I want the audience to be able to understand. Now, one of the things you did is you you recorded um, you recorded some of this. Uh, and, and so I think, I think we have a, a clip of, of what happened. Uh, how about we watch the clip and then we'll come back and talk about it. Is that all right? Yeah. Oh, okay. So we, no, I'm sorry. We don't have the clip, but you did record it. Is that right, Nathan? Yes. All yes. right. You, and what, what, what provokes you to, to record it? Honestly, I just feel like recording with phones nowadays, that's like the only way you can like get the truth of that whole situation. And I was afraid, like I didn't know what was gonna happen. So I just know, mm. I, I just felt like the only thing that I had was my phone. You mm. know, I felt like my phone was the only thing that was on my side. And you know, as we get into the story, you know, she, you know what happens, she says about the whole gun situation. And I just feel like I'm just so lucky that I had my phone, that my phone was recording everything. Cause I feel like if I didn't have my phone, you know, she has the power, it's, it's, it's her word against me. I'm just another black boy in a hoodie and sweats. You know, who's going to believe the black boy in hoodie and sweats over the person that has the power, the person that's supposed to be honest, the person that's supposed to take care of everybody on the plane, you know? Yeah, that's, that's, uh, you, you, you say profound things, young man, because what, what, one of the things that makes um, racism, and again, I'm talking broadly across the board in all aspects of it, one of the things that makes racism so insidious is the presumption of virtue that it gives to white people and the presumption of guilt that it gives to black people. And to hear you say that you were afraid um, and that 
the only thing you had to protect yourself was your phone. Uh, that moves me, brother. I mean, that, 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 that moved me. I'm, 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 I'm going to take a break. We're going to come back and talk about that. You're watching The Book of Sean on Fox Soul. Welcome back, everybody. We're talking to the actor extraordinaire, Nathan Davis Jr. Uh, and he's been walking us through what had to have been for him a traumatic situation on a flight uh, dealing with some, you know, what, what he uh, experienced as racism. And um, one of the things I want to ask you, Nathan, um, is because you started talking about this, but, but I want my audience really to get a sense of it, uh, perhaps at, at, a, at, a, at a deeper level. Uh, and, and that is, how did this particular person make you feel? Honestly, this was the first time I've ever felt a fear of dying, you know, and I will say it, it, it gives me PTSD, a lot of PTSD to even think about it and to talk about it. And I just felt just humiliated, embarrassed, you know, walking off that plane and all these eyes like staring at me and all they're seeing is a black boy with a hoodie and sweats. You know, I'm just like, wow, these people probably really think I have a gun, you know, and like, Sorry, what were we saying? No, no, no. I, I want I wanted you to finish, and then then I'll ask. Go ahead. Yeah, it just it was just I was just afraid. Like I literally thought that as soon as I walk off this plane, there's about to be armed officers. It's about, about to be an air marshal that's about to tackle me. Like I honestly thought guns were about to just be pointed at me as soon as I walk off. Like I I, I just it is it's crazy. And no, like it it, and, and it brought me back to like you brought up Detroit earlier. Like I, I, I just, it is, it's crazy. And no, like, it and, and it brought me back to like you brought up Detroit earlier. Mm. You know, you know, you know what's amazing about what you're saying is is how much you know art and reality, regrettably, when it comes to to race and and black existence, often mirror each other in tragic ways. Um, but but I, I want I want to make sure that that the audience gets a chance to hear this hear the, the the full breadth of the story. So let me take you back into the story. Okay. So the, the attendant comes and, say, and says, you know, um, cut cut your music down. The people next to you say we don't hear it. She comes back and says something else to you. And what happens after that? So when I pause it, she comes and she mocks me. She's like, hey hey hey. I, you, that's your problem. Your music is loud. You can't hear me because your music is loud. And she didn't know that I had my, my, my music was paused. So then she goes to the back and she gets on his phone. So I'm thinking at the time, okay, is, is she calling the cops? I don't know what's going on. So I just start recording. So I start recording her. And then the pilot says over the loudspeaker, hey, we have to turn the whole plane back around because there's a pilot on board that we have to remove. So they turn the whole plane around, take us back to the gate. Um, supervisor of operation comes on a plane and says, hi, can I have a conversation with you? I just want to get your side of the story. So I walked out, I talked to her and the pilot very calmly, extremely calmly, told the pilot what happened, told him both the story. And the pilot just says, I don't care. You have to get off my plane. It was so unprofessional. And I'm like, well, there's no reason for you to be kicking me off other than me being black. And he starts laughing. So I take out my phone and I start recording him and he jumps on my back trying to grab my phone out of my hand twice, grabs my wrist. Actually, my wrist was swollen. I found out later. So he jumps on my back, trying to grab my phone out of my hand twice. Supervisor operation holds him back. So then they tell me, go back on the plane and get your tuxedo. While I'm walking on the plane to grab my tuxedo, some just tells me, take out your phone and record. While I'm walking off, that's when you hear the flight attendant says, hey, he has a gun. And at that moment, like I said, I just felt like, so humiliated. I was embarrassed. I felt, I felt like I was about to die. Like nobody stood up. Nobody said anything. It just, I just felt so alone. Like, like I was so powerless. Like it felt like my life didn't matter. It didn't feel like I was an actor. It felt like you're just, you know, like you just weren't even a human being. Like it, it, it was just so crazy. Like, yeah. No, no. It's the, and the way you tell the story is powerful and compelling. And, and my and my sense of it is even as you tell it in part you're you're reliving it um, mm -hmm. because it, it, I mean it affected you and and how could it not um, but but again, but if if I may so she says he has a gun and then what happens she says I have a gun and the supervisor takes me off the plane I didn't get patted down there was no cops nobody it's like 
nobody did anything. I just walked away. And it's, it's crazy because there was um, one of the people that worked at the airport. She recognized me from the movie Detroit. And she said, hey, I saw you in a movie. Me and my son just watched the movie. And me and the um, supervisor operation was telling her the story of what just occurred. And she just started crying. She was like, all I can think about is my little kid. Like that happened to my kid. And then there was another kid that recognized me from TikTok, from social media. And I had to, you know, I took a photo with him and just everybody, it just after that, everybody was just apologetic about the situation of people that were at the airport. Wow. So you, you got at, at least some support um, from, from people who were able to see your humanity in spite of the fact um, that, that you had to deal with this situation. Um, it, it's very tragic and I'm, again, I can only imagine, you know, being, you know, have, having to deal with that. Uh, and then this, this may sound, you know, incidental, but you're, you're missing an engagement because this happens. Is that right? Yes. And crazy thing about the situation, I had to get on another flight. And when I showed up, I had to perform. You know, I didn't even have a chance of processing all of this, healing this, talking to myself, meditating this, I had to literally act like nothing happened just to go on stage and perform and wow. sing my heart out. It, 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 um, wow. It, it, your story so reminds me of what black performers, singers particularly, had to deal with uh, in the 50s and 60s, having to deal with on the road, deal with racism, deal with having to be stopped by the police and searched and humiliated and then, and then go and have to get up on the stage and act like nothing happened. Yeah. It's, 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 it's tragic. So, so, so Nathan, let me ask you this. What, what's, what's your advice uh, since you've been through this? What, what's your advice to, to African-American men uh, your age and even younger uh, who find themselves in this kind of situation? Because regrettably, um, this won't be the last time this happens. It'll happen somewhere else with someone else. And, and, you, and you now have, again, regrettably, firsthand uh, experience and wisdom. So what's your wisdom to all the young men like you who will have to deal with this? If anything like this happens to someone that doesn't have the platform and you know the resources that I have, just to stay calm. Don't, don't allow that person that is using their power to, to take something out of you. Don't, don't allow them to make you angrier or, you know, aggressive because it's like they want you to react that way so they can have a reasoning to say, see, I told you, you know, so to, to people out there that, that's, that's ever dealing with the situation, just remain calm. Remember to record everything. Don't go off, don't scream, just record everything and just stay calm until you're safe. I think that's great advice. I think that's great advice, not just for young black men. I think it's great advice for everybody in any marginalized community dealing with what's going on in the nation. And what's they, been going they expect us to not be human. They expect us to not have emotions. You know, they expect us to get punched and pushed around and not react. And, 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 and it's sad. You know, like I, 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 if I, I feel like if I would have held my phone or if I made any type of movement, I just felt like a cop would just be like, well, she said she has a gun. She's, you know, it has to be true. You know, so like, it, it, it's just really sad that we just can't be humans. You know, we have, cop, to, we have did, to wear We have to wear suits every day. We, we just can't be ourselves. Like I was getting on a plane in my sweats, in my hoodie, being comfortable to go to a performance. And I was still, that situation happened to me. You know, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, did, did the cop show up? No, no cop showed up. Okay, no cop showed up. So, so at least at least we have that. And I and I, I guess I guess what I also want to ask you with this, because it's 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 the kind of situation that you'll never forget. I'm sure. Never. It's always and, part of me. Yeah, yeah, and and it's the kind of situation that sort of defines you know a certain stage or, or moment in your life. So let me ask you this: um, when you when you now here's a better question. Think about yourself in the moment. Go back to that moment when all of this is happening. And what I'm fascinated with you, uh, what I'm fascinated about you is, is this. What was it? What did you summon? What did you call on um, 
What have you heard or learned that allows you to remain calm and centered in the moment? Why didn't you go off? Why didn't you just start cussing people out? Uh, you know, what allowed you to maintain balance and maintain your humanity in an inhumane confrontation? Well, growing up, I was, I never saw color. Like I grew up with my mom. My mom is extremely educated. She has multiple degrees and same as my father. And my mom always taught me that if I get pulled over by an officer to always comply and to remain calm. So that whole situation, all I could think was just the teachings that my mom were, taught me, just remain calm, just wait till you got the situation. Never, you know, never show your emotions in front of people. Wait till you get home, you know, to, to express your emotion. And that was just the whole time I just was like, I'm gonna just stay calm. Even though inside it was fear, you know, I wanted to cry. I wanted to, you know, I really wanted to break down. Like I've never been in a situation like that before where I felt like my life was literally in the hands of another person just because of them feeling like, you know what I'm saying, you, using their power that way. So it, it took a lot of strength, you know, it took a lot, a lot. And I'm still going through therapy, dealing with the situation. I have PTSD the situation like it, it's 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 actually hard to talk about you know and and i have to hold it back a lot 